Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to make a perfect gluten-free vegan pie crust that works every time and is golden and delicious. And I'm going to finish off the video by showing you how to make a filling for a strawberry rhubarb pie just like this one here. I probably should have let the piece set a little bit longer and the filling would have stayed a little bit nicer when I cut it. Having said that, I totally couldn't wait. And I've used this crust also as a cookie pizza. I've just literally made this as a flat crust and then drizzled chocolate and some toppings over it. And it makes a great cookie pizza. It makes great cookies. You can even modify it to make really good shortbread. But right now I'm just gonna show you how to deliver a really good vegan gluten-free pie crust with this recipe. Now here's the ingredients you're gonna need. I'm using a 1-1 flour, so basically an all-purpose gluten-free flour, but you can also just use like so many times, I can't stress this enough, countless times I've made this crust just by using uh, brown rice flour with a spoonful of cornstarch, like a teaspoon of cornstarch or just, you know, however much you see fit. Okay, so I'm just going to take the flour and that is how much is left in the bag. I might use that much. Let's see. All right, that's how much I'm using it. You can measure it like half cup or whatever, but basically you're just using one half brown rice flour or the all-purpose gluten-free baking flour, which I'm using right now, and one half almond flour. So there's only really three ingredients. There is the all-purpose gluten-free flour, coconut oil, and almond flour. I'm gonna open my coconut oil and the almond flour. I've been using a lot of almond flour lately. It's super awesome. Okay, so I have the gluten-free flour in the bowl, and now all I have to do is add the coconut oil and the almond flour. So I just need the same amount of almond flour as I have of the gluten-free flour. Maybe a bit more. If you add a bit more almond flour, that's totally okay. So I'm gonna mix those two together. And then I'm gonna put in coconut oil. I'm gonna put in probably like three spoonfuls this size. I like to put in a very minimal amount and then work around the batter or uh, the pastry, sorry, with my hands. And then if I don't have enough oil, just add a little bit more. So I'll work it around in just a second and you can see the consistency I like to get it to. Okay, and lastly, you can add some kind of sweetener. You can add brown sugar, or agave nectar or honey or whatever it is you want to use to sweeten your crust. All right, I'm just gonna take this and mix it up with my knuckles, which you can do with a spoon obviously as well, but I find this just works a lot quicker. And then you'll get to see the consistency that I like to have it up before I bake. So, I've mixed up the batter and it's kind of got that consistency. Maybe uh, a little bit, just a little bit grainy, but it is pretty soft and pretty smooth. You don't need to overwork it, but you definitely want to work out all the lumps of coconut oil. And as you're working it into the pan, if you see any lumps of coconut oil, you can just push them out and mush more of the flour into it. Okay, all right, I'm gonna put it in the pie pan and we're ready to bake. Rolling. Okay, I'm just gonna start pushing the crust into the cake pan here. 
Now you can use this crust in a traditional pie pan and just push it into the pan and it will have high sides. But right now I'm just making the kind of flat pie crust that goes on the bottom like a cheesecake. So it looks like I made lots of batter. Sometimes I find myself stretching it a little thin, but here I've got lots to work with, which is good. It's better to have too much. Okay, there it is, all pushed in. And I try to get it uh, as even as possible and just push it right into the edges. Don't worry if a bit gets cut in the rim there, that's not gonna be a big problem. These quick release pie pans are pretty easy to use. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop it in the oven at 350 and wait till it gets nice and golden. into the oven at 350. So this recipe is mostly about the crust because you can obviously make any kind of pie you want with that crust, but I am going to take it that extra mile and make a filling. So I have rhubarb and I have strawberries. I'm going to make a strawberry rhubarb filling. Everyone loves that, right? Okay, so I just put a little bit of rhubarb there just for a kick and I'm gonna add my strawberries. It doesn't really matter how much fruit you have in there because you could have a really thin, shallow filling or you could have a really thick filling. That's how much I have in there. Normally, I like to thicken my fillings with cornstarch and agar root, but right now, I only have tapioca starch and cornstarch. So that's gonna have to do, it'll be fine. So what I do is I take some cornstarch and usually I take two big heaping spoonfuls of cornstarch. I'm going to put a little bit extra in because once you have this mixed up you can add it into your filling incrementally and just see how it's thickening. Okay the crust is out of the oven and it looks like a perfect golden moon. I'm super excited and it smells delicious. So here's my cornstarch in the bowl, and I'm just going to add some tapioca starch to that. Normally I add one spoonful, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra today. Okay, so what I wanna do is mix this with water to uh, create kind of a paste. Having said that, if I put too much water in at once, I'm gonna get lumps. So you really wanna start with a small amount of water, just like mixing a custard. Maybe that was even too much there, and no, I think I'll be fine. And just mix it all in gradually until you get a nice liquidy paste. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna use this to thicken the filling. So when the strawberries and rhubarb come to a simmering boil, I'm just going to pour this in and stir it, and that's gonna thicken up the filling before I pour it over the pie crust. I realized that I would have to wait a really long time and use a really low temperature if I wanted the jam to be mushy on its own and not have big strawberry lumps in it. So I'm just using a potato masher here on the jam to speed that process up a little bit. And I'm pretty much ready to add my cornstarch. Okay, this is simmering away now. And if I add the cornstarch at this stage, it's really gonna thicken it up. You can see the white cornstarch stirring in and you really have to stir it in quickly or you could get lumps. And the white discoloration of the cornstarch actually goes away when it heats up and you just get this beautiful jam texture which when you pour into your pie will set. Okay, so this filling looks beautiful. It's strawberry rhubarb, and I'm just gonna pour it over the crust. Da, 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 da. That looks like a pretty beautiful pie to me. I'm just gonna let it set, and then we can enjoy a slice.
Thanks for watching our super simple pie crust recipe. Be sure to let us know how you enjoyed the recipe in the comments bar below. And be sure to subscribe because we have lots more fun, tasty recipes coming your way.